This message, which I'm about to tell you, is a very special one. It affects all people of today and of the many years to come. And Welcome to Think Museums. To today we have a special, extra special no guest, Eddie Gross Sr., who is a singer, a very talented artist. He's also my dad, so I'm very proud. Eddie Gross wrote an album, was a singer uh, back in the 70s. And please tell us about your musical adventures and about this picture, which is my favorite. <laughs> Well, this picture here was taken in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. This is where I wrote the music for the album Guantanamo Bay. And I did the recording in Jamaica and the pressing and mixing of the album in Miami, Florida. So I was about uh, 21 years old, I believe. And... Um, I would go down to the television station and get on the piano. This is how I made my music up, made my songs up. I was still working at the power plant there as the evaporator operator. So on my time off, I would go down to the television station. That's where I wrote the songs. And then I got three guys, Bill Moon, David Moon, and I believe the other gentleman, the bass player, his name was Freddie. I forgot his last name. But we all went to Jamaica, and I hired a music contractor there that got the other musicians from Jamaica. And this is when I recorded the music at Dynamic Sounds Recording Studio in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. It makes no difference where you came from or how you live. When you were... Yeah, I was about 19 years old, and I was still working at the desalination plant, but singing also on my time off around the city of San Diego, and sometimes in Los Angeles. But uh, I had this suit made in Tijuana, Mexico, and a couple of other suits I had made. Okay, and, tell us about the, the, the Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, well. Going to get the suit made. That was a yeah, funny story. I had to, had to <laughs> went down to Tijuana, got my suits made, tailored made, the style I wanted. And then uh, I didn't want to pay the tariff going back across the border for the suits, so I tried to sneak them back across the border. I hit them in the trunk. But needless to say, I got caught. <laughs> The guy told me, just go over to the side there. He wanted to check the car out. So that's when he found the suits. And I had to pay the tariff. Lucky that I didn't go to jail. But that's how that went. So he got out of that. Let yeah. us talk about this letter. Oh, this letter here? That's, uh, I got a letter from President Nixon. He was president at the time. And uh, this is down in Cuba, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. This is after I made the album, and uh, they sold through the Navy exchanges, and on the uh, Sea Lift Command, what they call for your stores that are on ships. And I said, well, I got the album, they planted all over Cuba, and uh, on the base. And I wonder if President Nixon would like an album. And so I sent him the album and this is the results of it. It was actually a card, a nice Christmas card with the writing on it and everything. And it says, uh, oh, I don't have my glasses. Oh, I can read it for but, you. Would you please? I sure will. Okay. I will be honored, Daddy. <laughs> I'm a proud daughter. <laughs> Nixon sends letter to Gitmo Singer. When the desalination plants, Eddie Gross recorded his album about Guantanamo Bay, which went on sale in December 1972, he decided to send a copy to President Nixon, saying then that, I think that he might enjoy an album about the Navy 
at Guantanamo Bay. This week, Gross received an engraved reply from the White House. It reads, It was thoughtful of you to share the spirit of Christmas with my family and me. We are grateful for this kind of expression of friendship and goodwill, and we join in sending best wishes to you for every happiness throughout the new year. A cut off the album, which is on sale for $3 at the Navy Exchange sound scene, has recently been released in Jamaica, California, England, and South America. The single that is entitled Eddie's Jamaica. When not working at the diesel plant, Eddie spends much of his time singing with a local rock group, Fred, which will appear Saturday, March 16th, 1972, at the Windjammer Club, saying he is planning a super performance. Gross was, has promised to bring all the selections out of my closet and really lay them on stage for those who attend. Come out for a show you won't forget, he adds. So now yes. I gotta show you some of those pictures. Of, <laughs> I gotta you. show you some more pictures because we got we got some beautiful things here going on. Yeah, that's still in Cuba. Is that a um, I think a fort, a Spanish old fort. All right. In Cuba, right uh, right across the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna show you some more pictures here. My daddy on oh, stage. Yeah. Now these are when. I was in high school, and I was doing, uh, trying to imitate James Brown singing the song, Please, 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 Fall Down on Your Knees. <laughs> All the girls, you know how that goes. Oh, my. <laughs> Were they yep. throwing bras at yep. you on yep. stage? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think yep. we do have another one yeah. here. Uh-huh. All right. Yep. Yeah. That's my daddy in 1972, <laughs> singing on stage. Singing on the stage. All right. Tell us some, some of the names off of the record, uh, the names of the songs. There's Eddie's Jamaica. Oh, Eddie's Jamaica. Uh, Guantanamo Bay. Just tell me people, getting high on life. Think of me. A message to no the people. Where you go, who you meet, Gotta find a way. I want you but to baby, know, baby. I'll always be in love with you. And Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, life goes on. There you go. That's right. We got another picture. <laughs> this is my dad, Eddie Gross Sr., on stage mm -hmm. singing. That's at the high school, at the Morris High School stage. Oh, that was right down the, the right hill from down Grandma's that's house. That's right. Uh -huh. Morris High School. I okay, so we I had a lot of people in Morris High School. I was in 11th grade, I think. At the so time. around 17 years old? Yeah, 17, 18. Yeah, 17. Good. So tell us some of the challenges you had with recording your album. Oh, the album? Oh, gosh. I mean, this was in, in 1972, yeah. right? Well, in Cuba, I worked at the power plant as a desalination operator, converting fresh water from ocean water. So we had to work every day, 12 hours a day. So in my downtime, I would go down to the television station, get on the piano, record the songs that I like, I'm just, you know, make them up, play the songs. And then I would have to take the embassy flight. We had two flights that come into Cuba, but the embassy flight would come once a week on a Wednesday, and it goes to Jamaica, for a day, do what they have to do, and basically go back to D.C., Washington, D.C. So I asked my employer if I could just go and get a work permit in Jamaica so I can do the album. And uh, I had problems with trying to go through them, so I went to Colonel Cranston and uh, the Navy. And I asked him if I can get on the embassy flight to go to Jamaica just for one day so I can get the work permit. And I had to make the album called Guantanamo Bay. And I just told him, I said, and on top of that, it's going to boost the morale up for the whole base. And it took him about maybe a minute and a half to write 
the uh, permit okay for me to get on the embassy flight and go. So I did that, got the work permit, and then me and the three other fellas, I was talking about Bill Moon, David Moon, and I think the guy named was Freddie, um, the bass player. We practiced the songs, uh, what we wanted. Then I contacted Carlton Lee at Dynamic Sounds Recording Studio in Jamaica, and I needed a music contractor. So he contacted the musicians that I needed for the horns and other stuff to make up the rhythm section and uh, for the recording. So I put paid in advance and then I had the permits. So we all took, I think, a couple of days off on a regular flight to go to Jamaica and do the music. So I recorded the rhythm track in uh, Jamaica, along with the horn section. And I did the mixing and the pressing in Miami, Florida. And then everything was mailed back to me for approval. And then with the pressing, they was able to distribute through the other countries that I wanted. And so basically that's it. And uh, at that time, it took about $9,000 to make, and it made about $32,000, $33,000 on that. It was selling right here in San Diego, 32nd Street, Navy Exchange. Yeah, so it was selling all over. So those are some of the hurdles I had to take to do that. It's very hard to do an album from one island and you got to do it at another island then got to go to the states to the pressing so it's 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 a challenge challenge and on a naval station you can't have a private enterprise okay yeah i had a private enterprise but since i was building the morale up for the navy it was okay uh, this is think museums and we're here in california with my father-in-law who's a great artist in the 1970s, he compiled an album called Guantanamo. So I have one question that I, I want to go back, and this is, uh, when did you start singing? I started singing in the third grade. In the third grade. At an Easter program. Yeah. And the music teacher, Mr. Noss, I lived in Coronado, California. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. And went to Glorietta Elementary School. Okay. And uh, Mr. Noss, uh, he was trying out some students okay. in the classroom. And then I guess he liked me. And I had a high voice at the time, being a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the song I was singing was Old Sons and Daughters at the Easter uh, this was a church. performance. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then from there, in the fourth grade, Mr. Noss took me to San Diego State College to sing for a East, not Easter, excuse me, for a Christmas uh, program there. They had a few other people there singing also. So I sang the same song. And then uh, also during that time, by fourth, fifth grade, he would take me around to uh, the Hotel Del Carnado where I would sing for the Rotary Club. The Lavanita Cafe uh, over there, I would sing with people who whining and dining, stuff like that. And let's see, I went to the, um, it was a teenage dance, coming out of high school, but it's at junior high school. And I was singing a song called Over the Mountain. That was way back in the day. <laughs> But uh, that was some of my yeah. experiences of singing. singing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, And I kept singing, kept singing. And then um, when I moved to San Diego, got a band. And uh, I had a few bands, but uh, the one good band that I really had that was very impressive to me and some of the other people that liked us was uh, Eddie and the Showman. Eddie and the Showman. Did you say it went Eddie, all over. Eddie and the Showman? Eddie and the Showman. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, 
we went uh, like on Channel 8, Channel 39, oh, singing. Wow. Yeah. I, I think I even went to Channel 10. I'm not quite sure. I think wow. so. Yeah. So you were a, you were a big fan. Yeah. Then. I was singing all over, all, all over San Diego. Mm -hmm. Santana High School. Wow. Uh, San Diego High School. Mm -hmm. all, all over. All over. San Isidro, mm -hmm. Recreation, Portuguese Hall, Point Loma. Yeah. Yeah. I was singing all over. What would you classify your type of, uh, or genre of music? The music? Yeah. The uh, rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues, okay. Yeah, R&B, rhythm and blues. The original yeah. R&B. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. And I did shows with Sly and the Family Stone, yeah. uh, Jerry Butler, mm -hmm. famous singer, Jerry mm -hmm. Butler, mm -hmm. Shirelles, mm -hmm. uh, The Tokens, I don't know if you ever heard of a song called The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Oh, yeah. With the tokens, yeah, yep. uh, I forgot who else was on that. It was a doo wop mm. show, yeah. Mm. And uh, let's see, this a lot. I've been all over. All I went to the wow. Great Western Fairgrounds up in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, did the James Brown Please Please. And oh wow! Got the trophy, <laughs> and, you know. We had a lot of trophies. <laughs> we had a, about eleven piece, twelve piece band. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, person. Yeah. A lot so, of brass back at that time. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow, nice. So, if you're watching this content right now, you can hear in the background, we got this song called Guantanamo playing. So please leave down the comments below. Let us know what you think about Eddie and his band in the 1970s. What do you think of their music? Just leave down the comments and you get a response. And Eddie's Jamaica hit number four on the Jamaican's chart. Oh, wow. Hit number four, yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that the same as the Billboard? Or yeah, it's uh, uh -huh. it wasn't on Billboard, the yeah. Billboard magazine. Yeah. No, I didn't get in Billboard, but it's on the Jamaican chart. Oh, it's right. Jamaican charts. Yeah. They had reggae, Bob Marley, and those guys out there doing their thing. Oh. Yeah. 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 So you were number four, and Bob Marley uh, was something. Jimmy Cliff. The harder oh, they come, the harder they fall. Oh. I wow. shot the sheriff. All kind of stuff like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Singing at the Sheraton. Yeah. <laughs> it was good old days. Yeah. Good old days. Good yeah. old days indeed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Reggae musicians were recording in that same studio. Yeah, Talk Dynam Sounds recording studio. Uh, Carlton Lee, uh, a group of Chinese people owned that studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, not just uh, Jamaicans, but uh, Paul Simon did the mother and child reunion. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a nice big studio. And the nice board and yeah. everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Carlton Lee, the sister Sheila Lee, mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh wow, because yeah, uh, yeah. when he heard that Eddie's Jamaica, mm -hmm. so he put that out mm -hmm. and uh, hit number four, yeah. Wow, because it was a mixture of reggae mm -hmm. and my style of American R&B. Yeah. It wasn't a complete reggae, mm -hmm. wasn't a complete R&B. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was the mixture. It, was, it we went. Number wow. four, yeah. Your band, the Pinkertones. Pinkertones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Pinkertones, uh, that was before Eddie and the show. Mm -hmm. But the Pinkertones, we were out in Point Loma, that's where we practiced out over there. And like I said, we did some uh, uh, gigs at the uh, Portuguese Hall, mm -hmm. a lot of different areas in San Diego. But that, that was a pretty good group too. Okay. But the, the best one was the uh, Eddie in the show, of course, the Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> when you produced the, that album, Guantanamo, Guantanamo, what was in your mind? Well, I've made, I made a lot of other singles yes. before this album. Mm -hmm. And actually, my first single was, mm -hmm. I was about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And I got involved with BMI Broadcast Music Incorporated for the publishing so mm -hmm. I had my own publishing mm -hmm. and I was able to do my, uh, the pressing up in Hollywood and stuff mm -hmm. but I never had did an album mm -hmm. so when I was in uh, Guantanamo Bay Cuba mm -hmm. I decided to say well I got time to sit. let me do an album called mm -hmm. Guantanamo Bay and because it was pretty rough working there mm -hmm. 12 hours a day every day mm -hmm. 
And uh, so I said, maybe some people might get an idea of what it's like. Mm -hmm. So that album, mm -hmm. Guantanamo Bay, the song Guantanamo, mm -hmm. expresses the living conditions, sort of, and uh, how hard it was, and how the vacuum of women and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, you know, we, well, I'm a man, you know <laughs> how that go back in the day. <laughs> so, uh, that inspired me to make this album. And then I uh, had to go through a few hurdles mm -hmm. to get the work permit. Mm -hmm. And the money's over there, and the music contractor, mm -hmm. all the musicians mm -hmm. like I wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, a girl, uh, excuse me, a guy named Roberto Smith, a Cuban guy who lived in the Cuban village in Guantanamo Bay, because we had Cubans working there and Jamaicans working there on the base. Uh, he was writing some of the music with me. He wrote the violin parts for the, uh, for the Guantanamo Bay. And uh, so with the uh, music sheets and the musicians, and with the music contractor mm -hmm. and people who can read music, this is how it all got started. That's kind of interesting because around that time, we know uh, Cuba was under Fidel Castro. So uh -huh. I'm, just, I'm just trying to, you know, think about it and imagine how was life then? Well, we couldn't go to the city of Carmenera. That okay. was the closest city mm -hmm. to the base. Mm -hmm. And they had what they call a no man's land. Okay. So we can go up to, and it's actually called a water gate. Go up there mm -hmm. the gate as mm -hmm. far as you can go mm -hmm. they got the sentries there the navy mm -hmm. sentries and stuff mm -hmm. and then on the other side of no man's land which is about 20 feet mm -hmm. of just nothing uh except for the pavement mm -hmm. and then of course the cuban had their guards on the other side so it's like a border basically oh, okay. but some of the cubans would come across they work on the base in the day and go back home. Mm -hmm. and Jamaicans uh, would come and they had a Jamaican village there so they stayed there like in the barracks so to speak and I stayed in the barracks mm -hmm. civilian working for the Navy there mm -hmm. and but for us we could not go into Cuba because it was communist mm -hmm. and Castro you know yeah. all of that mm -hmm. so but we we would see the uh, Cuban gunboats mm -hmm go through the bay and uh, but basically it was a vacuum because mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't that many women with all these men you know yeah. so mm -hmm. Guantanamo Bay this isn't the way seems as <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a vacuum around here you know oh anyway you know, and it's hard to call my workmen mm -hmm. dear you yeah. know what I'm saying dear you know, like a woman you know, yeah stuff. But that was just some of the lyrics in the song. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then the Admiral mm -hmm. uh, on the base, it was around Christmas time, and uh, he wanted to throw a Christmas party. So across the bay is the old Spanish fort. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he fixed that up. He picked us up with the boat, went over there, and we played sang the songs and stuff like that for the Admiral. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not singing at the different clubs on the base too. Like oh, the wow. Windjammer Club. Mm -hmm. Like that. Wow. So, so I just bring all my skeletons out the closet and lay them out there for you and just... It, it, it looks just, like... <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've read about something, Bay of, Bay of Pigs. What is that? Uh, the Bay of Pigs, that's something completely different. That was yeah. before I went to Cuba. Oh, okay. I was, uh, when I was in Cuba, we still had little problems with Vietnam mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. But the Bay of Pigs, that's uh, earlier. Okay. And that's when I believe the Russians were bringing, that's the Cuban Missile Crisis, bringing missiles in, mm -hmm. uh, pointed toward the United States and stuff. But that was something completely, completely different. different. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty interesting. But it was a it was a, it was a good uh, deployment for me to go to Cuba. To go to Cuba. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Jamaica, uh -huh. I've been to Haiti. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned Haiti, Haiti, and we know there's a lot of issues there right now. How was the Haiti back then? 
back then, uh, let's see, we had, I don't know if it was Papa Doc or Baby Doc, who was mm -hmm. uh, the governor at the time. Okay. You had a little bit of gangs and stuff, but it wasn't really like you see today. It mm -hmm. was uh, a lot of gangs and killings and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. down in uh, Haiti. Yeah. A special photo here. So what is so special about this photo? Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I was uh, mm -hmm. mixing mm -hmm. one of my songs. Mm -hmm. This is a mixer. Oh, that's a mixer? That's a mixer, yeah. That's, a, that's a huge mixer because what we yeah. have now as mixers are <laughs> very smart. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of different uh, settings on it, yeah. uh, instrumentation, uh -huh. uh, so uh, bias and all kinds of stuff. So I was mixing. When mm -hmm. you hear the music, yep. it's raw. Mm -hmm. You might want a more bass to it, a mm -hmm. more treble to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and uh, more volume. It all mm -hmm. depends. Mm -hmm. Or more like echo, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. reverberation, stuff like that. So I was mixing, mixing some of the music. Wow. Like that. And all this music were published in vinyl, right? Yes. It's all in vinyl. It's in vinyl, yeah. In vinyl. And I used yeah. to say that. Uh, Vinyl was king back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I would like okay. to know about the recording portion of your album, Guantanamo Bay, because back then they didn't have drum machines and a bunch of electronic um, devices making the music. So tell me how that whole process was. Did you have like trumpets playing behind you? How how was the music produced? Well, the way I would produce my music, and you could you could do it with a full band playing, but the way I would do my music, I would set the rhythm track first. That would be like your piano, rhythm guitar, bass guitar, drums, whatever you have for your rhythm section. And they would play the music, and then I would come back and overdub on a different track singing to the music and then I would have the horns but the music is all written then I, then the horns would come in I think I had two trumpets a tenor and tenor sax and tenor trombone I believe yeah and then the horns would come in and they would play their music behind all of that so that's just how, and then you mix it all, that's that mixture you've seen. This is how you mix all that stuff in. You bring out the horns, or more rhythm, more drums. And if you sneeze, you got to do it all over again. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I believe that's a 16 track, let's see, was it 8 track back then? I think that's an eight track back in Jamaica, eight track. But uh, they have 16 tracks too. Okay, like that. so for youngsters, explain 16 track, eight track. Because I mean, we just oh, Google it now well, and it like comes you, up. Yeah, like you have uh, two different tracks, it's just like your ear, you know, left and right. So it's like a stereo, so to speak. So you have different. Uh, layers in your tape that you that the pickups can record on that particular layer like a drum track might be only the drums boom 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 bop 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 or the horns on a different track so those eight eight tracks you have the eight pickups so you record the rhythm section on maybe one or two tracks all depends on what you have in the rhythm section and then the horns would be on another track. I would be on a separate track like that. Now that's only about four tracks, but you had eight tracks. See, so you had eight ways of mixing that down to make it all one complete good sound of music. And now they got sixteen tracks. I don't know what they have now. Yeah. Oh man, I but can't. We didn't have any electronics as far as uh, uh, making. You sound, enhance your vocals and stuff like that. We didn't have all that stuff. It was just all raw. Yeah, it's all raw. It's all raw. We was able to add your echo to it or like a reverberation and stuff like that. But uh, 
you had to be a, you had to have a good ear to mix mix that music yeah right and the music had to sound good or the people wouldn't like it they have to like your music yeah that's for yeah. sure yeah all right I'm gonna show another picture I believe this was also in Cuba yeah Guantanamo Cuba uh -huh. all right. right there on the bay yeah and right this was in 1972. Bay. Yep. Yeah. August 1972. August yeah. 1972. Uh -huh. Yep. Very beautiful. Yeah. I love these pictures. This is my <laughs> dad. Okay, so I am a very proud daughter. Yeah. I'm so happy to be interviewing you today for Think Thank Museums. You. And let's talk about some more things that you've done because you've had several careers. Yes. Yeah.